Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, Mr. Zach Croker. Give it up. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go on. <laughs> Hello, good evening. I'm Zach. Uh, I was talking to a girl earlier today, and I asked if she was from here in the spring. She said, no, she actually was from Pueblo. I said, sorry? She said, Pueblo. And I said, no, I heard you. I'm just saying I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to school for a number of years. I have a number of degrees and a number of things, and there's a lot of stuff I could be doing besides stand-up comedy, but this makes my parents a lot prouder. <laughs> One of the problems, though, with going to school for so long and not being a doctor is I don't feel like I can ever help in emergency situations. So, you know, you're somewhere and someone has a heart attack, someone's gonna stand up and say, oh, is there a doctor in the house? Well, I have a film degree, and so I'm just not ever really needed. And I don't mean in emergency situations, just ever. <laughs> And of course, I don't want there to be emergencies with people having heart attacks, but it would be nice to be able to help. But nobody ever has a heart attack and then needs dramatic lighting set up. <laughs> no one ever stands up, is there a director of photography in the house? I'm like, yes, it's my time. <laughs> There's a stereotype that occasionally stand-up comics are kind of depressed or down in the dumps and whatnot. I don't think that's the case with me. I think I'm a pretty positive, upbeat type of guy. Actually, even my blood type is B positive. <laughs> But despite being positive and whatnot, I have had some up and downs in life. For example, when I was 10, a dog named Zach bit me right here. And that's not a joke, it just, I think it makes it suck more because there should be some camaraderie with the names. <laughs> but in the dog's defense, I probably deserved it because I had called his mom a bitch. So there, there is that. <laughs> Lesson learned. Unfortunately though, because of the dog bite, I'm still really nervous around dogs or anything dog related, which sucks because I really like rap music. <laughs> so, Snoop Dogg, DMX, obviously all out of the question because all that barking g gives me flashbacks. My doctor actually said the technical term for that is PTSD-O-double-G. <laughs> I, I grew up in a, in a small apple orchard type of farming town, so naturally I wanted to be a rapper. <laughs> And it was difficult, it was very hard to be taken seriously as a rapper from the orchard. <laughs> you can believe that. Even my parents weren't supportive at all. I think part of that though had to do with they came home early one time to find me scratching a Neil Diamond record like I was a DJ. <laughs> they walked in and I was like, sweet, and my parents were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm a rapper, mom, I'm a rapper. Go to your room. So they weren't supportive, so I had to take my rapping underground to hide it from them. And this made, it, this made it really difficult because I had to do everything myself. So when I came to making my first album, I called it Made From Scratch. <laughs> in the high school, I had a 12-inch Pioneer subwoofer in the back of my car because I was all about that bass. And I was like, oh, you're, you're one of those guys. I was one of those guys. I apologize. And it seems dumb now, but at the time it would seem so cool. And you know, we'd be driving around and I'd see a, a street sign that said bump ahead, and I was like, don't mind if I do. <laughs> Crank that. <laughs> I used to always also be really afraid of being abducted by aliens. And I know that sounds just insane and silly, but it was actually a pretty realistic possibility growing up in an apple orchard because my dad hired like 12 of these guys every harvest season. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a tip for all of you. If you're ever on death row for some reason, just try to get a meeting with the governor and then mumble a lot, because hopefully he'll say, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> I think a T-bone is a pretty crappy name for a car accident, but I can understand why they choose that, seeing that T-rex was already taken. <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> I, <laughs> I tried to write this joke about neuroscience. Um, I'm not going to do it because I was told it was too cerebral. So <laughs> that's enough puns. That's enough. <laughs> I'm not religious. I have a couple friends who are though, and anytime I have some sort of dilemma or problem or whatever, they're always like, Zach, just turn to the Bible. Just turn to the Bible. All the answers are there. Like really. Like, I'm trying to get a new computer, like, what's it gonna, what's it gonna tell me? 
And so, you know, I was trying to decide between a Mac and a PC. So I thought, you know, I'm an open-minded type of guy. Let's give it a shot. Let's turn to the Bible, see what it says. And lo and behold, I should avoid apples, and the Lord has made windows in heaven. Second Kings chapter 7. <laughs> So I got the PC and now I'm a Christian. I think that's how that works. I used to go to my grandparents' house a lot and try to get, like, get the wisdom of the ages and their advice on things. And this is great, except that they often would give me contradictory advice. So for example, one time I had some you know, government issue thing and I thought, oh, should I, write, should I write a letter or should I join a protest? And my grandma's like, well, actions speak louder than words. My grandpa's like, yeah, but what was the? I should speak louder than words. That is my name of the source. That is my name of the source. Still can't remember it. Oh, the pen is my name of the source. Nervous. Okay, so then later, later, um, <clears throat> so then later, um, had a similar thing, and I was working on a project and didn't know if I should do it all myself or try to get some friends to help. And my grandma said, "Oh, you know, the more the merrier. Bring them on." My grandpa said, "Yeah, but too many cooks spoil the broth." I'm like, okay, well that's confusing. Then later, I was dating this girl, and we broke up, and my grandma's like, ah, well, there's always more fish in the sea. And my grandpa said, pipe down, mash is on. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. I always had really bad vision, and so recently I decided to get LASIK eye surgery. And this has been great, because now my vision is just spectacular. But on the downside, my vision is spectacular, and I always thought I was more attractive than it turns out I am. So that sucks. So, I mean, it's, it's great because my, my vision is, has never been better, but my self-esteem has never been lower. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I was very impressionable. And anytime I saw a movie, I was like, oh, that's what I want to be when I grow up. And so I saw Indiana Jones, I was like, oh, this is it, I want to be an archaeologist. But then Jurassic Park came out, and I was like, ah, actually, I want to be a, I want to dig up dinosaur bones and be a paleontologist. But then, gentle audience, I saw Ghostbusters and realized, ah, I want to be a marshmallow man. <laughs> Thank you very much.